episode to the, uh, I think the recording. Awesome. So hi, John. How's it going? We got to, sorry, we got John here. The, the, the brilliant John. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Hey, nice to good? see you. Yeah, good. Well. good, 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 good. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I wanted uh, to do this quick, quick uh, video for my, for our clients, right? To, to, I guess a little bit inspire them and show them on what's possible and just like give them an idea of how it do looks like from beginning to end. So I know you've done a few deals, but we can focus on just one of them if you want. Literally as much as you can share from beginning to end, how you found the deal, the negotiation a little bit, maybe a little bit about the closing and then what were your plans kind of like to grow the business, right? So whatever you want to share up to you, um, go ahead, my friend. If you want to introduce yourself a little bit and, and yeah, this role with it. Uh, I'm John. Look, I'm, I'm John. I've, um, I have been actually in, uh, I've been looking at m and uh, LBOs, this different stuff. I've been a student for, I don't know, like a long time. And I do have to say, like, we're actually, right now is the best time probably that I, that I have, at least since I've been around in terms of knowing what to do and how to do these deals. Um, back when I first started, uh, really there wasn't very much good information. So like what Moran is doing in terms of putting this coursework together, it's really nice to have this kind of stuff here. Uh, it's, it, we just, uh, it didn't used to be this way. <laughs> So um, a little back uh, background here. Uh, I, with my family, we bought uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, property management and um, uh, tangentially related like real estate uh, businesses. So we do like some of the property maintenance and services and things like that. Um, and I keep it in a little deliberately big because I don't necessarily know if everyone wants to uh, have the specifics of what we do here. But um, anyways, um, me, my brother, and my father, we decided that we wanted to, to get into business together and that uh, we wanted to um, ultimately buy and grow and actually roll up uh, businesses in this particular sector. Um, and so my primary uh, role and responsibility here was actually sourcing the deals. So uh, it took me about six months, six solid months. We sent out letters. Uh, let's see, we sent out letters. I made phone calls. Um, and uh, I actually, uh, I did go door to door and walked in, cold walked in. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, the, thing, the thing that actually worked the best was cold walking in. Once they see a name or once they see a face and they put a name to it, I mean, uh, there's, there's very little you can, you can do to beat that. And I would also make a recommendation. So when you go up to like, a, for example, a company, you look up uh, on manta.com, this particular company, look up, pull up the name of the owner. And when you cold walk in, if you're doing this cold walk in thing, and I'm telling you it works, if you cold walk in and say, Hey, is, uh, is Janice available or is, is, uh, uh, is Justin available or whatever? Um, <laughs> you go really, you can get pretty far with that, right? It works. It works. And, and I so gotta, actually I that's how say, John, I got to jump in and say something. I, I'm telling you, I have people who came to me, some clients are like, Hey man, you know what? I, I sent, five emails this week and I didn't close the deal yet. What the fuck am I doing wrong? Right. Or they're afraid, <laughs> they're afraid to call people. They're afraid to send letters. They think that the script is what's going to get them the results or not. You see what I mean? It's like the exact. No, 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 no. This is, this is what I did. The, the number one thing that I found that actually they never seen the people that actually end up doing the deals and the people that don't do the deals is one of the people that do the deals are actually likable because uh, the truth is it's, it's uh, it does take a lot. You have to find the right seller. First of all, and the second thing is, and then this is the number one thing, and I can't emphasize this enough, is, is actually your ability to build rapport. So if you can't build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the business owner, and they, and, and I tell you actually, when, you're, when you get good at this, um, and this takes a lot of practice, and I'm not saying I'm there yet, but I can tell you, when you get the, home, or when, when you get the business owner to say, I see myself in you 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, you got them. I mean, that's what, that's really actually when, when they, when those words come out of their mouth, you know, you're on the right track, you know, you're doing the right things. I love it. Um, do, you wanna, do you want to share maybe a few of, if you had to say, Hey, you know, here are the one, two, three things you got to do, or that really helped me in order to build rapport or just to, I guess, move things forward in terms of talking to business owners. Well, yeah, you ever heard the, uh, the, the expression, um, uh, it's by Maya Angelou or Angelou, I don't know how you say it. Anyways, people don't remember exactly what you said. They just remember how you make them feel, right? Yeah. And so a, a little trick that I love to use, and I don't know. First of all, I don't spend a lot of time talking, actually. When I, whenever I'm meeting with somebody, or I, don't, I just generally am pretty curious. And uh, you'll find, actually, that, uh, that the more that they're talking, they should be talking like 95% of the time. 
And maybe you, you ask five, the 5% five of the time that you're talking, you're asking questions, actually. And it's just being genuinely interested in about how the, the mechanics of their business work and all the different things. That's, you know, that's step number one in terms of building rapport. The second thing is um, that I would recommend is actually um, working on um, whenever they, you can see someone light up when you really, when you, when you hit the right hot button topic for them, they'll, their face lights up. In other words, you can see it in their eyes where they're like actually on something that they really enjoy talking about. Right. And so, um, if you stay there and kind of like, uh, keep in that area for a long time, you can really build those good emotions. And what you're doing is you're trying to associate those good emotions with you actually in this conversation and, and the idea of getting them to where they want to be. And ultimately, I mean, when you have these conversations, look, um, really what you're going for, I think in my mind is, um, okay, what is it that you're actually trying to accomplish? I mean, where do you want to be? Where do you want to, where do you want to be in five years? Where do you see yourself? Where are you heading? Um, and ultimately, are, and this is an actual, you know, if this isn't true, then you shouldn't do a deal with this person. So are you the right person to get them to where they want to be in, in five years or whatever, or three years or whatever? So if they want to be a beach uh, in like uh, in, in off Mexico, you know, are, are you the person who's going to be able to take that business to, 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 to a place where they're able to do that? Or can you come in with the cash and get them kind of there? There's, um, that's, that's a really big element to this. And then the second thing I would say is, um, actually understanding uh, every time you get, you, you, someone says like, for example, um, I, I really recommend always testing quote unquote objections. So if someone says, well, I really need cash, all cash today. I might say something to the effect of, so if I walked in, if I walked in here with half the cash that you really wanted, um, uh, but this is all I could come up with, uh, and everything else, you know, met, met your standards, you would say no. I, I should I shouldn't even walk in here with half half the cash that you're asking for, uh, and have this conversation. And they well, then they say, well, mm, maybe if this and that, you know, th that's how you, you, I I recommend checking the objections over and over again. And the more times that you check the ejections, you're actually going to find out really where they're going to, where they actually stand on these things. I, I love it, dude. And I'll just, I just got to emphasize and say, so you said, hey, you know what? You really need to realize where that owner want to be, right? And see if you can really help them. Some people think that it's going to be a win-lose in order to close the deal. And it's, in, at least in my experience, the last you, thing. No, you can't do it. Right? There, there is no, there is, there are no deals that come together as win-lose. It doesn't, exactly. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really happen. And in fact, a lot of people, I think it's a terrible shame kind of people think like this, but uh, generally, the richest people on earth, they have that abundance mentality. And uh, if you get away from that, you're going to find, even if you do make the money, uh, it's not gonna, you're not going to keep it. You're not, it's not going to stay with you. Um, and, um, and actually, it's amazing to me um, how many people actually try to uh, actively avoid paying people money. Uh, the, the more money, you should be pretty loose with your money. I, I, don't, I mean, and I quite literally mean, you know, spending more money than, than you really have, just so that you have the motivation to go out and make more money, A and B. Uh, you just know, like, um, you just have, you just have that knowledge that, well, you know, I'll make more money, <laughs> basically, the certainty yeah. that you were going to make more money, right? Because exactly. the more you put out, the more you get back. It's all about the energy, dude. I freaking agree with that. All about giving, getting it out of your system. Um, so let, let's take a step back for a second and, and get some more clarity, if that's okay, on, on the specific of the deal. Because I know people will really be interested about the idea of, like, just hearing firsthand how the negotiation went through, like, a little bit about the back and forth. And, and then kind of like what, what really worked in the end of the day to really finalize that deal. So the, the, the first deal that we did was the, this wasn't, uh, this was sort of, and by the way, you move really fast. You start really picking up stuff really fast when you start actually applying things, you know? Um, so when, uh, when I did my first deal, um, it, uh, we, we had been through, let's see, I called, uh, I had really about four quality leads in terms of uh, working with, with people and actually negotiating back and forth. Well, they've got something that I actually want to pick up. And um, the, co the only question now is, you know, getting the price and the terms that we need to do a deal. And um, anyway, so I sourced about four, four deals and all of these, I sent letters out, uh, but of the, the, the leads that I had, the, the quality ones, they actually all came in for me cold walking in. Okay, so that kind of tells you like how, how, what really worked for me, at least in the beginning there. Um, and the second thing is, um, with, with some of these sellers actually, and it, it, one, a couple of them were like, well, I kind of want top dollar and I, I, I want it terms. I want the terms, you know, all of it in my favor and none of it in your favor. So, you know, there's not much I can do with that. And the, 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 another one was, 
kind of just testing the water to see what he can get for his business because he didn't necessarily want to sell today. Maybe he wants to sell tomorrow, that kind of thing. And then the last one was um, actually uh, a, a business where it was just a burnt out. It, it qualifies. It basically was a burnt out owner. And um, uh, we met. I, I, I walked in there. Um, we, we met. Um, and uh, we actually ended up, uh, I said, well, you know, let's go get lunch. They said, well, you know, we're interested, basically. And I, you know, well, let me put it this way. When I walked in there, I basically handed a card to her. And said, well, so, okay, let me think, let's go back even one step further. Uh, when I walked in, I said, you know, because like I told you, I look up on Manta who the owner is or what the ownership is. And like eight, eight times out of 10, it's actually pretty right. So um, they do have pretty good data on that. And it's free. So when I go walk in, I say, um, Hey, look, is, is, uh, is Justin there is, is, uh, um, uh, is so on whoever there. And then if they say, yeah, well, basically they said, yeah. And uh, I said, um, I said, well, you know, this is kind of a private conversation. Do you mind if we speak privately? This wasn't an area really the employees are around and you really want to be, uh, this is a delicate situation. And really, if, if employees kind of find out or, or suppliers or different people find out that the business is for sale, uh, employees leave like immediately. Um, and I'm jumping ahead now, but when we took over, we, we had like turned over a lot of staff, like almost everybody, they all just left and we kind of replaced them one at a time. But really when, when people see change ownership, they think, Oh my God, what, uh, what's going to happen now? So anyways, um, I pull, we, we talk outside briefly and I said, well, look, I, the reason I'm really here is because, um, you know, I, I, I'd like to buy your business. Um, and, uh, uh, she said, well, I said, what? would that be interesting to you? Is that something you want to talk further about? She said, you know, yeah, actually it is. And, um, and then from there we got uh, lunch or I, don't, I think it was actually, yeah, we got lunch and a couple beers and it was a uh, husband and wife and me and my, my, uh, my pops. And uh, we met with them and we went over the financials and different things. And it turned actually out to be a, um, a larger business than we thought, but that's great for us because we wanted a bigger business anyways. Um, and once we were looking through the numbers and they, they did actually have some problems, um, with consistency. They didn't have any, everything was on paper. There's no, there was no clear processes. And in fact, actually still a year later, we're still working on building out the processes and the procedures. So uh, there's a lot to that. Um, uh, let's see, but in terms of actually the flow of that deal, so that's kind of how it started when we had lunch and we were kind of filling out the terms and everything. And, um, and basically look, the way that kind of goes is, and I hate, by the way, I hate this game. In fact, I'm doing this right now with somebody else. I'm like negotiating a lease. They say, well, you know, they, it's like, a, it's like a game of chicken. Who wants to throw out the first price? Right. I think it's a totally stupid game. Uh, but anyway, so we, we, we threw out, we threw out the first price. Um, and, uh, you know, I was actually a fair offer and looking back on it, we should have actually gone lower, but, uh, these are, you know. Just getting started is actually the most important thing. So, anyways, once you get the first one, you can move. You can move on from there. And so, um, and so, uh, yeah. Anyways, they they basically agreed to it. And the way that we financed and did the deal. Was... Oh wait, lost you, John. I lost you there. I lost you, bro. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I got a phone call coming. You're the most exciting. Yeah. Guy, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I, yeah. So I think I think um I think everybody really is um uh really the, everyone wants to know about sort of the stru how you structure deals and things like that. Yeah. And that is a big part of actually doing deals and being able to structure them properly and do this different stuff. Uh, but the truth is like it's it's overemphasized, I think. So, anyways, the way that we did this, it was uh, it was an SBA finance deal. So we went to uh, SBA lenders. And actually, and I would recommend this anytime you're looking at a bank loan or getting financing. Um, banks change their preferences like every single day, basically, about like what they want to put together and everything like that. Um, and so, and so um, we went to a uh, broker who deals with like a bunch of different banks. Because if you go to one bank, it doesn't, it, he doesn't know, like maybe, maybe it's right fit or maybe not. But if he's got 20 different banks that he can call upon, then they've actually got, you know, and to me, that's actually worth paying maybe a point or half a point more just to, just to get that done because they know actually they can get the deal put through. Well, anyways, uh, I, we, we've got the, uh, we got the SBA loan 
uh, this is really an asset light business. In fact, there's really not much uh, assets here that, uh, that we, um, that, that are in this business. Um, and so it was mostly, and the, uh, truthfully, the only reason I was able to get this deal done is because I could rely upon my, my family actually, uh, to, to do this deal. Otherwise it, it never would have gotten done. Uh, there's no way SBA would ever loan me money. Right. Um, I don't have the financials. I don't have the assets, that kind of stuff to get this kind of thing put together. But anyways, so for anyone that, that is kind of like looking at SBA loans as a way to get deals done and things like that, you can understand it's a pretty long process and there's some paperwork to deal with. And having the wrong SBA loan officer, um, some people, it's just, there's, there's red tape they got to wade through. You should never have to deal with that, but you need to have somebody that actually can wade through that. So that's what I would, I would recommend actually working with somebody who's been doing SBA loans for a long time. Um, and, and, I'll just and I'll just add recommend it. I'll just stand and say, because you mentioned this deal you did with an SBA. I just want to make sure that people understand that you don't, people outside the U.S., they don't have to use SBA loans. It's not like if you don't have SBA, you're done, right? Obviously, there are different cash flow institutions There's, around the world that can do similar things. Yeah. You can mention a deal that you closed without any institutions, right? And there are tons of deal structures that we're showing you guys, the clients, of how to structure deals without any capital of your own or of financial institutions because there are tons of ways to leverage and structure deals with just negotiating different things with the, the seller, right? So that, I just want to make sure that people understand that you don't have to use just SBA, of, right? Of, of course. Like what, what I want to say really is that um, there are a lot of different ways to structure different deals, but really the hard, once you get over the first part of, of it, which is uh, can you get the owner to want to say yes to do a deal? So that's like getting that is at least, you know, from there, you can offer different alternatives and be creative and getting, getting things done, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, really getting them to, getting them to want, you know, want like you and, and want to do a deal with you. Uh, that's really the first step. And so anyways, it was about uh, three months, three or four months from when we um, actually got the, the heads of terms, I guess, uh, or the, the term sheet put together and we we're all agreed. Uh, there was a, a due diligence period with the bank where they got to check assets and, and put evaluation to the, uh, to the company. Um, loan went through without a hitch. They got their money. There was, there was of course, seller financing involved. And we ended up putting um, uh, some money into the, into the kitty uh, to put this thing together. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so it was about from, from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. It was about six months. It was about six months. And, um, and here, here's, a, here's another thing, right? Um, and that's what I'm telling to everyone who's joining the program. Guys, you gotta be committed to that. If you think that you're gonna be a billionaire tomorrow, that, that's probably not for you. I mean, you're getting into a place here. We're talking about buying established businesses with employees, with some brand recognition. Those guys have been through something in the past. So you, you gotta bring something to the table. If it's money, if it's time, if it's commitment, if it's you showing passion to get that business from the owner, you, you can't half has it, if that makes sense. You can't be 50% in. It's either all in, you want a business or you don't. You can't be like, ah, oh, let's give it a try. Let's call a few business owners or a few banks and see if I can close the deal. You, you either in, you want a business in the next year or just go and, I don't know, work for Uber or something, right? There, there's no in between. Yeah, and it, honestly, I mean, the truth is uh, it, it, you should not expect, you shouldn't expect to do a deal in anything less than six months. But, you know, these things do happen, but it's kind of random. I mean, you could get lucky, right? But I would expect at least uh, to put at least six months in of, of work, like consistent. And, you know, going back to, I think, the people who do this successfully and the people who don't do this successfully is actually having the daily regimen of doing, doing different tasks. Um, you know, I got I, I to gotta tell you, like, um, actually being in the space of, of owning a business and um, developing and running a business, which is what I'm doing, uh, now with, uh, with obviously with, uh, with, uh, with other people in my, in my group, but, um, um, really it's, it's, it's a growth process. unlike probably even anything, anything you've really been through. In fact, I'm a very different person right now than I, than I, um, than I was a year ago when we started this journey and really very different than about two years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've picked up a lot of lessons in that short period of time, but, um, I gotta say, I mean, I would recommend this to anybody. I think, uh, just forget about the money or the, the monetary aspects of it, just in terms of like uh, determining, you know, what kind of grit you've got and, uh, and uh, what, what, what kind of, what uh, the ways that you communicate, the ways that you do business with other people. Um, 
these are all these are all valuable things to learn. I think so, uh, and it's it's uh, unlike any other uh, any other. There's no other place where I think you can really pick up that. So yeah, yeah. I see. I seriously see a business as a spiritual journey. There's nothing out there with so many challenges, ups, downs. And yeah, like I said, you got to have a grit, you got to have consistency. And I love the fact that it's about the daily regimen. Like instead of you focusing on a specific goal, like you got to focus on something that you're going to do daily. If it's going door, door to door, if it's calling people, if it's sending letters, right? Focus on the habits that you're going to do daily. Predictable input is a predictable output, more well, or less. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, you got to focus on the input and then really don't worry about the outcomes. But just being predictable on your input is, uh, is what leads to predictable output. Um, I love it. Sweet. So any, any other kind of like main last lessons that you want to share with people to, to, to help them? Yeah, our, our, probably I'll tell you the biggest mistake we made so far. Um, um, and, uh, I, I kicked myself cause I was kind of workhorse behind this, but it kind of got away from me too at the same time. So, um, we did pick up a second business actually. So, um, on the, on the rounds of letters we sent out initially, um, there was a much smaller company. It was basically a bolt on acquisition. And the way that we structured this, um, was um, it was no money down. So this was a no money down deal. And we basically absorbed his accounts. Um, and the idea was that he was going to come sell for us. Um, and uh, and uh, we would just take over the uh, operations of it. Um, but uh, this was still early in the game. And we're, we're, we are still not even close necessarily to being the, the kind of operators that we want to be. But we're more or less, uh, we're probably in the top tier of our industry right now. At least uh, top, uh, let's say, 10, 20%. But back then we were probably mid middle of the pack, and so uh, we 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 uh, we botched a little bit. Uh, well, actually, we did botch the transition. But uh, <laughs> truthfully, now I'm looking at other companies because I, I actually talked to all of my uh, competitors. And I don't even want to call them competitors. All of my peers, really. Um, and uh, I've seen some people buy some other people, and uh, it turns out it's actually uh, th these guys are making repeatable mistakes. And um, so one one of the mistakes we did when we bought this first company. Um, was actually that um, we ultimately overpaid. Now, I, there's not actually, I, I want to be clear. It's not because we overpaid. It's because we structured the deal improperly. Because what happened was it wasn't an earn out. It was all seller financed and it was a lot of money, more, more than it was worth, in other words. So we ended up getting actually upside down on the cash flow of the deal. The way, looking back on it, the way I would have structured it, the way we should have structured it was... Uh, paying the same amount of money because he was really looking at the figure and he, he liked the idea of that figure, which is fine. But it had to be, it, instead of doing it all guaranteed, which is basically what it was, um, in terms of like stand, or, uh, spread, uh, like even payments over time, is, which is how we structured it, I would really recommend instead having done it, uh, let's say, as a percentage of revenue or some, some variable, right? So in other words, there's, there's more, it's much more closely tied to actually the performance of the accounts after we pick them up. That was one thing. The second thing is, and uh, I don't, I, I, have, I guess this is this, the government being uh, crazy, but um, I, I don't quite know, understand why this is exactly the way it is, but we're in a, a regular recurring um, maintenance business. Okay. So um, we have all of our customers on account uh, with uh, credit cards. Right. And so what, what happened was when we took over this company, we tried to, we had to migrate all of the credit cards to a different processor. So you have to recollect, let's say a hundred different credit cards. And I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> Again, I don't know how to solve for that problem other than just have two different processors. But uh, it is not worth it is not worth having to recollect everybody's credit card or payment information, especially when you don't have a relationship with them. You probably lost so, uh, what what percentage you lost there? Uh, we probably lost about twenty percent of our accounts. Between that, uh, there's another thing here is that uh, he was also actually the person um, that was doing a lot of the service. And when you go up against personality like that, it's hard to replace that. I, it, we could have been any company. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, and so you, we were going to have lost uh, probably about 15%. We probably lost an additional 5% just because we didn't know what we were doing. Um, but uh, every time you do these kind of things, it's, you know, it's obviously something you need to, you'll, you'll pick it up. You get better at it. So, um, Got it. Awesome, and, man. Yep. Yeah, go and then, uh, there, there was one more, there's one more deal actually here that we, uh, we unfortunately missed out on, but I've been chasing this guy. For, I don't even like the word, I guess, I guess I don't like the word chasing, but, uh, I've been, I have been uh, back and forth negotiations with the third company, smaller, and it was just, it was actually smaller than this company. It was a similar deal. 
But uh, I ended up losing it um, because he ended up selling to the employee. Now, this was uh, this would have been a little bit of money down because really that's what he, he actually wanted money now because he legitimate the expenses and things like that. Um, and again, when I say checking, checking the, um, checking the, uh, objections and everything like that, just continue to do that. And you'll actually get a real, you're kind of mapping out gradually where they stand and what their positions are. So, um, ultimately he actually did, cause a lot of times in backing up here, when you, when you're going for seller financing, the logic of this is almost unbeatable. So, um, it's, Hey, Mr. Seller, Mr. Mr. Uh, business owner who I'm trying to buy. If I hand you a bundle of cash a day, what are you going to do with it? Usually it's I'm going to invest it. I'm going to put it in my bank account. I'm going to put it into the stock market. I'm going to put it into real estate or whatever. And the next step of that is, well, what do you expect to earn? <laughs> right. I mean, that's because what, what do they care actually? Uh, if, um, if the money, you know, they know their business, right? Uh, so wouldn't they rather invest in the business that they're selling than put it into some business they have nothing, they have no idea about anything, right? Like on the stock market or in real estate that they really don't know much about. So the logic of that's pretty sound. But then when you add to that also, the, the second part, which is, um, which is that uh, uh, if you expect me to hand you a pile of cash and you're going to walk away, you got to think I'm an idiot. Because one, um, if I had a pile of cash, why wouldn't I just go do a bigger deal where I can get bank leverage against that? Yeah, I'll make more money and it's a more sound investment and there's less risk to it. So like, you know, and this, I love, you know, honestly, it's so true because you can't find a seller out there with clean financials really. So you say, well, the bank's not going to finance this and they won't actually finance this. So if you think I'm going to come in here with a pile of cash and, and hand it to you, and walk away when I could go buy a better business with uh, that's bigger and it's got better financials and get bank financing against that. Why would I do that? So in other words, why, why should I buy your company over somebody else's if you're not even going to finance it? I got to have someone finances. So who's going to do it? <laughs> right. I'll, I'll right. So, so these are some of the things like, you know, this is just like, uh, these are some of the, um, some of the logic behind like, you know, and then the last one is actually, well, if you're just going to walk away with the cash, how do I know I'm not buying a, uh, buying a pig and a poke? I mean, how do I know that it's not a piece of shit? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. In other words, there, I mean, there's lots of risk for you. Exactly. So if you, yeah, I mean, uh, you're asking me to take all the risk. If I'm handing you the money, and you're just going to walk away. That's not going to work. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, when you start actually adding these language patterns and these different things into the conversation, you start to get a, you start to get them to, to see the, the soundness of actually doing it coming to these, these, um, the way that coming to the way that you want to do the deal more and more. And again, most negotiates, by the way, the second deal that we did took about a year to put together. So for, he, he came off the letters, but about six months after we bought this other business, we, we, we'd always, by the way, always keep in touch with the people that, you know, keep, keep pinging them, keep talking to them because yep. keep following up because, um, you don't know, there's a lot of different deals to do besides uh, acquisitions and M&A. There's a lot of different deals and uh, you don't know what they have. And if you're constantly asking them, what are you looking for? What do you want? Or what, what is it that you need? Um, or just try to be helpful generally. First of all, you, you, you're establishing a, rela uh, a relationship that, uh, that can last a long time, which is good to have friends, right? It's always good to have friends. The second thing is um, you don't know what kind of deal you can put together with them. So just constantly following other people, these other, these, uh, these, uh, these other uh, peers, and, you know, different people that you could we work with in the future is uh, something that I would definitely recommend. And it's actually, it's been, uh, it's been good for us so far. So um, anyways, this is kind of like, uh, I don't know if I'm rambling here or whatever, but. Uh, no, it's all good. Uh, man. You're, you're giving gold. I love it. I don't want to stop you as long as you, as long as you want to add anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a real golden nugget. Um, a lot of people talk about working um, outside of the business and um, and uh, that you need to be working outside of the business, right? Everyone wants to, really, I mean, everyone wants to buy a business and then, um, that's kind of the goal here is everyone wants to buy a business and then not have to work in it. Well, in order to do that, really, you have to have the systems and processes set up. And we all inherently know this, but no one actually ever tells you how to do it. Um, but, uh, and so kind of the idea really here is just to to actually have regularly scheduled meetings 
with people and saying, okay, well, how do we, how do we improve things here? What you do from that, you take whatever they say, this is how you improve it. And you say, okay, well, this is what you're going to do from now on. Right? So this is your idea. You should, you know, you want to obviously make things better here. Right? So this is what you should be doing to, to do on like a daily, like, like I said, predictable input, predictable output. So on a daily basis, like this is what you should be doing. Right? Yeah, and yeah. just kind of implementing that and then turning that, turning that basically those, those conversations. And I would recommend actually recording them, turning those conversations into process and procedure manuals is, uh, is what actually creates, creates good businesses. Um, because none of these, none of these other companies out here have any of this kind of stuff. And uh, if you were to actually have this. And everything is in the program guys, just go and watch it. All the organizational charts, the process books, how to track APIs, exactly. meetings, all that shit, just freaking do the work. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, any last words? Yeah. Pick up the goddamn phone. Pick up the phone and start uh, start uh, cold walking into businesses. I mean, it's uh, if nothing else, you'll make a friend because everyone appreciates that. So um, it's not it's not hard. Don't make it hard. It just takes uh, it just takes uh, it's a process. So all right. I love it, Jim. Thank you so much. Cheers. Good chatting. All right. Yeah. Let me just stop the recording.